I like this show. I really, really do. Arthur, along with the Magic School Bus, were some of my favorite shows growing up. But when a show goes on for 19 seasons like Arthur has, it's bound to have quite a few missteps. I also understand that Arthur is aimed at a particularly young audience, but the same rules still apply here. In fact, I have to be double hard on the morals of this kind of show. And when a high quality show has a dud, it has a dud. I already reviewed Arthur's big hit a while back, like a few years back, and I'm reviewing this episode for most of the same reason. It really bunks up the moral, and this episode bunks up a moral badly. I should preface this by saying that I don't like DW. She is not a good character. In most episodes, she comes off as annoying and selfish, and you just hate every second that she's on screen. I get it that in the real world, that's how young children may act, but sometimes you've got to sacrifice realism to write a decent story or create a decent product. How fun would a video game really be if you had to stop running every few minutes to catch your breath? I'll tell you this, that would be far less annoying than some of DW's whining, and this episode is probably her worst appearance in the entire show. Let's take a look at DW's, DW's very, very bad, bad mood. mood. The episode starts in a nutritious lunch all neatly packed for you. Gee whiz, thanks mother. The 1950s. Arthur, are you ready? We've never ever been late for school, and we don't want to break a perfect record. Ah. Uh, I think there might be something in the water supply. Somebody's poisoned the water hole! Arthur keeps talking about his perfect family, and everyone is creepily perfect. My life is just about perfect, except for one little thing. Can you guess? Oh, so that's what happened to Fallout. Honestly, the strangest part about this scene is the giant monster DW destroying everything is more likable than DW in the rest of the episode. The actual episode starts with DW complaining about cereal. These corn pops are soggy! Isn't cereal supposed to be soggy? You can't make me, and I'm not going to preschool either! I'm sick of preschool! I'll do what I want! Do you hear me? Do you? Oh boy, it's going to be one of these episodes. Okay, this episode tries its best to accurately have a child throwing a massive temper tantrum for the entirety of the 11 minutes. It's loud and it's annoying as hell, and it's not at all pleasant to watch. It probably wouldn't even be pleasant for the target audience. And do you know what the real kicker is? We're supposed to sympathize with EW. No, God, please, no, no! When this show is basically aimed at kids Arthur's age. I won't feel better in the morning. I won't, I won't, I won't! Okay, Arthur's mom and dad, I think you forgot your line. DW, if you keep slamming those doors, you're grounded. Like, it's hard for me to feel any kind of sympathy for DW. I mean, what do you think happens when you let your kids do whatever the hell they want and give them anything that they want? The answer is really simple. They do whatever the hell they want and think that everything is owed to them. Also, why is Arthur the only one who's sleep deprived? At the very least, you think DW slamming the door in an angry tantrum would keep her parents up as well. But no, I, I mean, listen to this. You're just making me go to bed because you don't want me around. You don't love me. You wish I wasn't even born. Maybe this was established in the theme or in the first episode and I just forgot, but does DW speak in a frequency that her parents can't hear? Or is this just a Rugrats kind of thing? Or are her parents really so browbeaten by their spoiled child that they just ignore everything that she does? I mean, forget being mad and scolding DW, Mr. Reed doesn't even have a reaction. Yep, the sky is blue, my daughter is an asshole. Arthur, why don't you just ask her what's wrong? Because you don't want to justify bad behavior like temper tantrums? So Francine comes over to Arthur's house to ask why DW is acting up. You know, this could be a very good episode about anger management and how to deal with it, but if the episode is trying to teach that message, it states that you should keep complaining and shouting and annoying everybody. But you know what they say, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Actually, no. If a wheel keeps squeaking, I'm going to throw it out and get a new wheel that isn't squeaking. That's how the real world works. So now we spend a minute with DW just going on rants about how she hates her life and how blah 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 shut up. DW, can I ask you a question? Maybe. What's the matter with you? <gasps> this question offends DW, and I don't know why. I mean, the reason DW is acting up like this 
is because she didn't get invited to the birthday party of someone she doesn't even like. But throughout the whole episode, she feels entitled and highly justified to this invitation. I mean, why is DW quiet about the actual problem if she feels like this is owed to her? I didn't think she'd get so upset. It's not your fault, Francine. You're absolutely right. It's your fault for not scolding your child when she was yelling and ranting at Arthur. It's your fault for completely ignoring the issue. Be parents to your children. But I forgot, your kids getting bullied in school is karma for hurting the one who could do no wrong. I'm surprised you guys don't pray to DW at night. It's gonna be a future episode where they start a whole religion around DW. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, but you really are being a total doofus. <laughs> I just love insults in kid shows that aim really young. But I'm Arthur's friend. When something's bugging him, I want to help. The message of this episode is very muddled. I mean, yes, it's good to help people who are going through problems, but just because you're having said problems doesn't mean you get to be a colossal, ahem, <laughs> doofus to everyone around you. You see, DW is now getting a bunch of attention because she's being rude and throwing temper tantrums. It's going on for days. If you try this in the real world, even if you are a young child, people will push you away and they won't want to deal with you. And ironically enough, people pushing DW away was her problem in the first place. So we have an imagined spot of temper tantrum patrol, where a bunch of cops come and try to arrest DW. <laughs> it's really funny, but this kind of behavior, if constantly kept unchecked, could realistically lead to DW growing into a very troubled child. The kind that gets into physical fist fights all the time, gets into drugs, and doesn't listen to any authority whatsoever. You know what? I think DW's being a pain because she's upset about something. I reiterate, being upset about something is not an excuse to be an asshole, especially to people who have done nothing wrong. And it's in this scene that the episode goes from intolerable to horrible, because it's portrayed that DW shouting and generally being unpleasant should be awarded with sympathy and understanding. I mean, even what they're trying to do would not work in the real world. You want a child like DW to tell you what's wrong? You need to get her to cool off first. You need to stop all of this slamming the doors before she'll actually give you a straight answer. Trying to get to the bottom of the situation in the middle of these emotional outbursts is only going to escalate the problem. So they try to figure out why DW is constantly throwing temper tantrums by constantly spying on her. Where'd she go? Ah! I know what you're doing and it won't work! There was supposed to be a message in this episode, right? Francine, can I ask you a question? Sure, anything. Why don't you go back to your own house? And stop bothering us! DW, this being rude to everybody has got to stop! Well, to steal a quote from DW, just what are you going to do about it? No, I'm serious, dead serious, what are you going to do about it? You see, saying stop doing this or stop doing that isn't going to work if there's no weight behind it. DW knows you're not going to do anything to her at all. Hell, she's been rude to everyone, even her father, for three or four days, and has been slamming doors all night, and you haven't even given her a time out, five minutes in the fucking corner. Hell, you know what? Arthur and Francine, despite their failings, are better parents than you and your husband in this episode, because they're actually paying attention to your child. Well, I know something that might make me feel better. I know I'd feel much better if I could see Crazy Cool Kittens, The Journey Home, this Saturday at 1 o'clock. You've seen that movie twice, DW. No, the correct answer is because you've been rude all week, you're not seeing any movies for quite some time, and you're grounded. How about if we take her? Arthur and I would love to go. <sighs> <sighs> Oh good, you're teaching her that if she acts like an asshole for a week, people will take her to the movies. You want to find out what's wrong with DW, right? No, you do. He wants to stop the temper tantrums. And the last thing you want to do is bribe or reward your child to get them to stop with the temper tantrums. Like seriously, it does not matter how much they yell or shout. Caving in or doing something that they want is something that you should not do to end a temper tantrum because it teaches them that gimme gimme always gets. Remember that we were supposed to be sympathetic to DW during this whole episode. So after acting like an asshole for a week, she wants to go to a movie that she's already seen twice. I'm assuming she's seen them both times in the theaters as well. Even back in 1998 when this episode came out, that was pretty expensive. She wanted to go to the movies at this specific time, not to watch the movie, but to infiltrate and trespass on a birthday party she wasn't invited to. She states that she's not really friends with this person and doesn't really like her, and doesn't play with her. And also, it's a birthday party to a movie that she's already seen twice. <laughs> Yep, the preview screen's telling me to turn my cell phone off before the movie, which you probably can't even read. It's just barrels and barrels of laughs. 
<laughs> because I have lots and lots of friends. And I'm after DW makes a fool out of herself, I, I, I know you're four, but you're sitting in an end seat next to your brother. They're not blind. DW decides that she doesn't want to be in the theater anymore. So after DW acts like an asshole for a week, gets to go to a movie in the theater that she's already seen twice before in the theater for a petty reason to make the popular girl jealous, someone she doesn't even like, without even apologizing for anything, DW gets rewarded with ice cream. And she also gets to go to Francine's birthday party. To Francine's birthday party. Yes! What? This is a third grade party! Just wait till I tell them! Just wait! And revenge is always the solution. And you should always seek to make the person who shunned you jealous. What, what was the moral of this episode? Right, probably people until they accept you. Even if you don't like each other. Excellent message for the kids. DW is gonna grow up into someone with a massive victim complex. Or she's gonna be in the system throughout all her adolescence. Have fun, Mr. and Mrs. Reed. You know what? You wanna know how to be a good parent? Watch what Mr. and Mrs. Reed do for DW and do like the opposite of that. This episode can go die now. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has an original point of view. And I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day. Get along with each other. You got to listen to your heart, listen to the beat, listen to the rhythm, the rhythm of the street. Open up your eyes, open up your ears, get together and make things better by working together. It's a simple message, and it comes from the heart. Oh, believe in yourself, for that's the place to start. Start and I say, hey, hey, what a wonderful kind of day.